Okay, so I've been helping a lot of colleagues uh, and former students and teachers who I work with in the, in the public schools and in private schools uh, who have been trying to figure out how to do remote learning. Because um, I have a lot of experience with this. You know, I've, I've been doing some form of, you know, at least uh, uh, internet augmented teaching since the 90s pretty regularly. Uh, I've done internet teaching in places where the internet is heavily censored or in places where it's not easy to get access to or where students maybe don't have the money to buy expensive books. So I know that it can be a challenge. Now, right now I am at Troy University and Troy has been a leader in online ed for a long time. I've got 24 seven tech support, uh, you know, anytime I need it. Uh, and I honestly don't need it that much. We have the tools that we need at our fingertips. I've got a fancy uh, camera. I've got a good microphone, all those kinds of things, right? And a lot of people I've been talking to have been giving me some version of the story, which is like, well, my school is now out for the next two weeks or three weeks or indefinitely. Uh, and we're being told that next week or after spring break or whenever we have to start offering our classes remotely. And our IT support is one resource guy who comes in every other Thursday when the moon is full if we ask for him. You know, they just don't have the facilities. And so what do you do in this kind of situation? What do you do when you don't have the kind of support? Um, I'm also seeing people who are very concerned about, you know, they're using things like Zoom or other things like that. And they're worried that what happens if once everyone in the country is using these systems, can, can they sustain themselves? So I want to talk about the basics. I'm not going to talk about really, you know, the, the really good fancy tools that you can use. I want to talk about the basics. And by the way, when it comes to basic principles, I want to throw a little plug in here to my colleague, uh, Matt Brown. He's at the University of uh, Texas at Dallas. Uh, and he's been putting together a document, uh, you know, of advice, uh, which I hope will be published soon, maybe by the time uh, you see this. Uh, but he's a, a, a really good teacher, really good communicator, uh, and really understands these issues about technology in the classroom. So I would recommend that too, uh, if that's available yet. And if it's not, I'm sure it will be. So uh, what about basic, basic tools? And I want to talk rudimentary tools. Okay. The first number one tool that is at your disposal is your email. You can send an email blast where you could just link to, you know, send documents, send copies of things, uh, you know, files that you've linked attached to it to all your students. And it seems very basic, but when it comes down to just essentially like, how do I hand something out to the class when I'm not there? Don't forget the basic tool of email. It still exists. And, and in some ways, email has been coming back uh, in recent years. Uh, we're starting to see news organizations start off by doing email blasts, that kind of thing, the way it feels very uh, early 1990s. But it's still an effective tool just for sending information out. So don't forget about this very simple tool. Another very simple tool is the idea of the text message that you can send an immediate message to someone and they can send it back. Now, there's all sorts of online tools uh, that you can create virtual meetings and this kind of things. And those are great. And I don't want to discourage you from using those. So I'm talking really down and dirty, the basics, you know, if you don't want to give students your cell phone number, uh, you can create a Twitter account that's only for this purpose. So you only invite your students to this Twitter account. Uh, you know, you might have to police it a little bit to keep others out of it so that you can in almost real time, respond to them. Right? This is a thing that you can do. Uh, so text messages or messaging apps that you can use. Well, what about some kind of audio or digital? Now I've had so many colleagues come to me and say like, I don't have a good camera. I don't have a good microphone. How am I supposed to do that? You've got a phone. <laughs> Your phone has a camera. Your phone has a microphone. And it can record things for you. And so even if you don't have a good computer, 
you can record things. Now you might be saying, well, it won't be good quality. Number one, who cares? Number two, the quality of video on your camera is going to be pretty good. You don't have a scanner, take a picture of the page. There are so many ways that you can do this with just the very basic tools uh, that are available to you. You need to share something larger. You need to share a workspace. You know, there's Google Drive, right? There's Google Docs. You can share documents with people. You can share files in so many ways. And these are all things which are essentially free to you. Well, where do I host these? I don't, I feel really uncomfortable putting up a YouTube page or that kind of thing. You have Facebook probably, right? I mean, Facebook is almost ubiquitous. Why don't you create a Facebook page which is private. And then you can post video lectures or little or audio lectures to there uh, and your students and their parents can see them in real time. Is this ideal? No, but we're not talking about the ideal. We're talking about what you can do. And you might be saying, well, I don't want my students on my Facebook page. Again, you can make your own Facebook page, right? I've got a lot of fancy equipment. I've got, you know, nowadays we use Canvas, we used Blackboard before, I've used all sorts of things. I'm using uh, Microsoft Teams to run meetings, all, all sorts of things that, that we can do. But these are all really fancy versions of the basic things. And so don't be intimidated feeling like just because you don't have a big IT staff or you don't have all sorts of, uh, you know, dedicated equipment for this that you can't do a good job. If someone has a lot of fancy equipment, but they're not a good teacher, all it's going to do is show their teaching in high definition. <laughs> it's going to show how bad they are to the world. If you're a good teacher, you should be able to use even those rudimentary tools to reach out to and communicate with your students and with the parents, especially when you're dealing with young students. So don't be afraid to try the tools you have and don't be afraid to be creative. Now's a time I think when parents and school districts and others will accept a lot of creativity that were things that we would never have allowed under normal circumstances. Right now, everyone wants you to succeed. So give it a try.